All right, how's everyone doing? Uh, welcome to From Z to A, Alphabetical Interviews with Zach Anderson. I am Zach Anderson. Uh, today we are here at White House Productions in Shelton uh, for the sixth edition of Monsters of Acoustic Rock. And my guest today is Steph Serenita. Hi. So thank you so much for being on the show. Oh my god, thank you for having me. You're welcome. And uh, so now I'm going to ask you the uh, difficult questions as long as they have something to do with the letters of your name. Okay. So we're going right. to start with S. So uh, tell me about the first show you ever played. Okay, so um, open mic, very amateur. Back when I was in high school, there was a coffee shop called The Cup a couple towns away from me, and I grew up in Long Island. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just said, hey guys, I'm actually going to do it tonight. I'm going to get up, and I'm going to play my song. And I did it, and my dad showed up with like, the video camera and everything. So, um, so that was like my first unofficial gig. And then my first actual gig was January 23rd of 2015. I was asked to do a happy hour for Ultra Radio, right. and then um, I became like a monthly happy hour performer at whatever bar they were at downtown New Haven. Nice. So it was, um, when I was asked to do it, I, because I stopped playing guitar for a long time, so when I was asked to do it, I knew about 15 minutes worth of music, mm -hmm. and I was like, how far is it? And they're like, two or three weeks away. I'm like, all right, no problem, <laughs> fake it till you make it. You so <laughs> I learned like 27, 30 songs in those two or three weeks to That's be impressive. able to do the two hour happy hour. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Are you nervous at all? Oh my god. I actually brought my notebook up with me and I had a stand, so that way I was like, if I forget anything. Right. Um, but I mean, just watch, because someone taped it, just watching it, you can tell, like if you know me, you can tell I was being a little bit more reserved mm -hmm. and I was afraid I was going to say something stupid on the microphone, <laughs> so I was trying not to talk in between. And uh, so watching that video and then watching me performing now, it's, uh, you can tell I've gotten much more comfortable in front of a live audience. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, uh, what are some themes or topics you uh, like to write about? Alright, um, so I don't write about myself, because I find that that's really difficult. So, what you know, I'm an English teacher also, so what I really do is I'll make up a st I'll just come up with characters and I'll make up a storyline and I'll say, okay, what will these characters like to do? Um, so, so far, it's been about, you know, um, denial of lost love, um, there's one about not being able to um, get out of a, you know, an abusive situation, whether it be like with a partner or with a friend or with a coworker or um, whatever it is. And then one one that I have is about um, when the when they started making the train line for the United States. So it's about um, people that own the property. Then the train was coming through and they're building the tracks, and it's about trying to like hold on to your your land and your your name and everything that is yours in light of like what the government is right. really forcing. Yeah, so I mean they they range. They're very a little bit of a range there. Yeah, yeah, they're they're very like all over the place. So um, I try not to just do like heartbreak songs okay. or like sappy love songs. I feel like if someone sees a chick with a guitar, they're like, I bet you're gonna write about love. So I try to write about the complete opposite. All right. Yeah. Uh, give me an example of something essential you have to do before uh, you play a gig. Um, Alright, so normally my gigs are right after I have a full day of work. So something essential is me trying to just sit or lay down for at least 10 minutes. Uh, right? Um, um, I always have my mother's necklace. She made this when she was 17, so I always have that on me, and then I always have like my dad's guitar strap, so that way like, I feel like you know my family's there, and someone's with me, even though I might be at a gig alone. Um, and I guess, because most gigs I have to bring my own PA, so right. it's really just like running down the checklist that I have all the chords and extension chords, and uh, one time I went to a gig without my mixer, oh. so um, luckily I live 15 minutes down the road, so I could turn right around and then yep. have that, and yeah, so. I guess it's really just making sure I have my ducks in a row. Yeah. Nothing too interesting. Alright. Uh, well, it's better than me. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's better than that. You're like, oh, whatever. It'll, 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 if, it, if, it, if something's missing, then it'll, it'll be an interesting show. Yeah, <laughs> we'll figure it out as we go. <laughs> um, how much does um, uh, people in the audience, uh, how much do they affect uh, like the preference of what you do in your set? Uh, yeah. Do you uh, feed off of their uh, their vibe, or do you just uh, could, like stay true to what you're playing? Um, all right, so that's interesting that you ask me this now because um, so I, I always feel comfortable with the set list, right? And, and I'm not nervous to deviate from that set list. So if I'm playing, 
um, you know, I feel like I'm a, I'm a chick with a guitar, so people walk in and they're like, oh, here's going to be like these slow songs. So I, I really do pressure myself to learn more upbeat songs, because um, again, like when I'm playing at the bars, it's really just like covers. This is my first like original gig, oh, so I'm super excited. I'm sorry too. I, yeah, I'm, I'm nervous, <laughs> I'm excited, I'm anxious, it's all good. All right. um, so normally, I feel pressure to like learn these upbeat songs and not just be so, you know, mellow and chill. Um, and I, I really do, I watch my audience and I see what's going on and sometimes I'll, I'll be like, oh, I don't want to do too slow in a row and I'll, so I'll skip down a couple. Um, but this last gig that I had, um, you know, there weren't too many people there and I was like, you know what, I need to just like do this for me because the people that were there, some of them were being obnoxiously loud on, on purpose and they're like, we bet we can be louder than your speakers. and just kind of being rude. So I was like, you know what, enough of this. Like, I'm gonna play what makes me feel happy. And it was one of the best gigs I've ever played. So there's something about really, right. you know, maybe having a rough outline, but really just kind of feeling what you're feeling and going with it. Right. So it was like yeah. a nice lesson to just have yeah. learned after a year and a half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <I> no, <know. laughs> but whatever. Uh, they say that was one of your best gigs, uh, but do you have a uh, specific highlight of? Uh, oh, I thought you were gonna ask a worst gig. I'm like, oh, yes, I do. I can definitely ask that too. <laughs> yes, but, uh, I have that too. All right. Highlight. Um, well, I mean, honestly, I was I was just completely honored to be asked in the first place after doing a couple of open mics to do a two hour happy hour. Um, growing up, like everyone in my hometown, my friends, it's like I was rock star Steffi. Like I was always gonna be a musician. So. To finally get some type of breakthrough opportunity to get at least in the bar circuit and no other musicians, that, that was a moment for me. Um, I recently, two weeks ago, taped a public access TV show. It's called Live Bands Touring with Sean Morse, and uh, that's going to be on in July on Comcast. And I think Frontier gets it also. And it'll be up on YouTube. And but either way, um, so that, that was something really cool because now I can kind of reach bigger audiences and different outlets. And I mean, be able to see yourself on TV, it's just yeah. like, that's super exciting. And then um, the other day I was on the radio promoting this amazing gig. Um, so I've had a lot of like fast things kind of just rolling and I'm, you know, I feel a lot of pressure to just keep the momentum going. Right. And so, um, so yeah, so I guess first gig, TV, mm -hmm. and then radio. There you go. Those are, awesome. <laughs> so I have three, yeah. I don't have one. Very cool. Yeah. Uh, so now you brought it up, so yes. uh, give me a worst uh, <laughs> worst gig moment or... Okay, um, so one of the worst gig moment, the worst gig moment really, um, it was last summer, it was the day that it was like 110 degrees and 100% humidity, like in the middle of July, and I was playing downtown at a bar that did not turn on their AC, mm. so they had a huge fan in front of me going out <laughs> to, to, you know, like the 10 people that were bearing the heat with me. Um, and it was hot. like I was just a beast, like sweating. My I, my hands have never been sweatier. I kept messing up because my hand was sliding on my guitar. You know, when it's hot out, you tend to go flat with your vocals. So I mean, just everything. And then they eventually were like, "Hey, you look hot up there because you're sweating. So let's turn this fan around." And it's one of those like big school fans. Yeah. So I felt like I was in an '80s video because I had like wind and all that. It was, it was just. Um, you know, everyone that was there had a good laugh mm. with me, not at my expense. Right. <laughs> um, and then I guess my, so that that was kind of like my fault, like mixed with the weather, right. like because I wasn't able to like really pick it out when I should have been. Um, but I guess my my other bad gig moment is um, there's a lot of times where people, when I'm playing a gig, will just walk up to me and be like, "Hey, I can show you how to do something better," and like oh. ask for my guitar or like one time someone brought in their instrument from the car mm -hmm. and decided to sit down and just play with me in the middle of the song and it it wasn't the same beat right. and it you know so um so I have a lot of bad not a lot but I have quite a few bad gig moments due to other people oh, imposing sure. themselves on what they think is an open mic but is right. actually a gig <laughs> yes I've, I've experienced those and it's, uh, it's yeah. a little little awkward and yeah little... Yeah. <laughs> you, don't, you know, you don't want to be rude to someone and be like, exactly. hey, get, because like that, you know, that's potentially someone that could be connecting with your music. Right. But you have to, you know, physically and metaphysically, mm -hmm. like, obtain your space and yes. try to keep it. Right. So, it's interesting, <laughs> to say the least. Yes. <laughs> um, so, uh, if you could sing a duet with uh, any uh, act ever in the history of music, okay. um, who would it be with? Shit. 
Okay, I didn't, uh, I didn't prepare for this one. Okay, a duet with anybody in the history. I mean, I'm a New York girl, so I guess my answer is Billy Joel. It's like, I mean, who, I don't know, if you don't like Billy Joel, right? I don't know what's up with that, but um, yeah, I guess Billy Joel. Any uh, uh, per, uh, like specific Billy Joel song? I'd be happy if I was just in the same vicinity as him, so it's kind of like, hey, Billy, whatever you want, you know? I, no, no, nothing specific, just anything. Even if he didn't want to sing a Billy Joel song, right. he wanted to like sing like Sweet Caroline or something, I'd be like, all right, let's do that, that's fine. So yeah, I guess Billy Joel is my answer. Sure. Good choice. Thank you. <laughs> All right, and I'd like to end all my interviews uh, with yes. three interesting or random facts about yourself that many people might not know. Okay, so I've thought about this, because right. I know you're like, well, people don't have answers. Yeah. So, <laughs> my first interesting fact is I do not like eating ice cream with metal spoons. I always like the pla I have sensitive teeth, so right. I like plastic spoons, yeah. which can be difficult if it's hard ice cream, yeah. but I get through it. <laughs> Number two is... Um, the, one of the first concerts my dad took me to, it was a Hanson concert, Ooh. but I know, I was like really big into that um, <laughs> back then. I think I was in like seventh grade or something. Um, it was at Jones Beach Theater, and my dad actually followed the tour bus on the parkway with me half hanging out the window <laughs> next to them, like, Hanson, I love you. And uh, he was like, never tell your mom, sorry, mom. <laughs> so I guess that's interesting that I once stalked Hanson down the Wonton Who Parkway. I know, I mean, come on, we've all done it, or wanted to do it. Um, I guess, okay, so my third interesting fact, um, that people don't know, oh, I thought I was prepared, oh no. Um, I guess it would be, oh crap. Mm. I, I, I thought I was interested, but apparently, um, Alright then, well let's go with, um, is there any food that you were afraid to try? Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, okay, okay. yeah, I mean, you just sparked that. Yeah. Um, okay, so not mustard, but the other condiment that starts with the letter M. Alright. Can't even say the name, <laughs> can't smell it, can't see it, don't, like, I gag every time, it's disgusting. <laughs> but somehow, I like egg salad. That's as long like as you don't the know that, yeah, yes, but, exactly. Uh, like I can't. That's just the M word around mm -hmm. me and my friends and my family. It's like, don't say the M. You want the M word on it? It sounds like <laughs> something dirty, but it's right. not. It's just, ugh. It's every uh, yeah. So I can't stand okay. that condiment All right. on anything <laughs> or near me. Right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's All great. right. Good. All right. So uh, thank you so much for being on the show. <laughs> thank you. Um, if you want to check out uh, Steph, uh, please uh, visit the link below. And uh, now we're going to cut to a performance from Steph Serenita. So uh, thank you once again for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Okay.
your ground, stand your ground, stand, stand your ground, stand your ground. My soul's glowing, and I'm gonna take my ground. 